Hey guys, Casey here from Maston Labs, and in this video today, you're going to be learning specifics on how our new AI tool SkySave works. You'll see six images in front of you, which I've already gone ahead and just done a base edit, you know, just using our three-step workflow, applying the preset, adjusting for exposure, and correcting white balance. Just sort of our main basic edit for these photos. Um, I'm using the Vintage Slide Film Pack on these, but really this video is here to help you discover and learn how to best use SkySave and sort of how it works and how to best make it work for your photos. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna jump into this first photo and we're just going to take a peek. So here you'll see, you know, I haven't done any adjustment to the exposure. I think this photo actually looks great as it is. But when we go over and we use our new tool, SkySave, bam, you'll see it's targeting specifically the sky in the photo. Now your photos do need to have a sky in it in order for this tool to work. Otherwise there will be an error that pops up that says no sky selection available, which is uh, you know obvious <laughs> if your photo does not have a sky in it. Um, so I've gone ahead, I've clicked this, and now this is where we sort of take that tool to the next level. And that's by using this preset slider. Now the sliders here for these presets and specifically with the AI tools really make a difference. So when I grab this, if I bring this back to zero, I'm reverting that image to what it was before I clicked on the AI tool. We bring it back to 100 and that's the starting point of when you click on SkySave itself. Now, the further you go, the more uh, pronounced that that effect will be. And why I want you to think about this preset slider specifically is I want you to be looking at your photo and making the best judgment call as how much you need of this tool. Not every photo is going to need that full 100. Sometimes you'll want to dial it back. Sometimes you may want to bring it down. In the case of this photo, I think I want to bring it a little past 100 just to really bring in some of those blues from the sky. And now that I've done that, now that I've sort of brought down the sky in this image, it allows me the opportunity to bring up the exposure just a little bit more. And again, just sort of rebalancing the exposure overall. I still get the beautiful blue sky. I still get these rich tones and colors. And yeah, it's as simple as that. So let's go ahead. We're going to just sort of power edit through these next couple of photos. There's this great photo by Colby Moore. I've already applied, I believe it was Provia to this image. I've adjusted exposure, corrected for white balance, and now we'll go ahead and use SkySave again. Boom, there you go. So on this photo, I actually think that this is doing a little bit too much. So instead of pushing it further, I'm gonna pull it back. You know, originally it was at this sort of white point, but I just want a little bit. I just need it to come down a little and the best part about this is that it's not affecting the building it is only affecting the sky because we're utilizing the ai functionality of lightroom to select specifically the sky in this photo all right now let's move on to our next photo we've already talked about what happens when you increase the power of sky save and how that looks when you decrease the power of sky save now I want to talk about how you can balance an image where your exposure may be a little blown out and how that will work with SkySave. So, so we have this picture that was shot in you know, Hawaii. I think it was during a sunset, it looks like. And you'll see right up here that the detail, the information is lost. The easiest way to check to see if your information, like that data in the highlights is gone, is you can go to your exposure slider and just crank it all the way down. If you start seeing something like this, so all of this white area right here, that is gone. That information is just totally lost. Um, there's no, uh, there's no getting it back um, unless you were maybe to use, uh, you know, an outside program, something outside of Lightroom, and then just replace the whole sky, replace everything from the, you know, from the water up. But we're not interested in that. You know, we just want to make this photo look good and look correct. So I'm going to go into Sky Save, and we'll go ahead. I'm going to apply that, and you'll see that it is bringing everything down and it's still maintaining it in a decent way. We've already pulled down the sky. It's a little more balanced. And now by increasing the exposure, I'm really just getting a little bit more of a light and airy look. It's not exactly what I would consider a light and airy look, especially not for something like Velvia, but it is helping again to balance the bright and sort of warm colors in the sky along with them. It's revealing more of the shadows with there, but again, it's just maintaining the balance within this image. And as you can see, this area that the data is gone, it doesn't, it looks natural. It still looks good in this way. And the balance of the clouds, sort of the exposure of the clouds matches the mountain below it. Now, if I were to go too far, if we were gonna go into the sort of the positive and amp it up, you can see that there's more contrast, more saturation, and it looks abnormal when you are looking at it um, sort of against the mountains. So you can pull it back. To me, that feels too bright. And I honestly, just right here at 100 feels pretty good. I'm maintaining that balance and it looks great. Okay, now let's move on to our next image. This is one, yeah, this is edited with Provia. And what the heck is this? 
a little bird. Okay, I thought that was maybe a dead pixel. You know what? In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead. I hit the Q button. I'm just gonna heal that out of there. It's distracting me. Um, okay, so here we have this sky, and and this will give you a really good example of sort of the gradient in which that sky save applies itself. So it's not darkening everything in the sky. It's darkening things in the way that you would use a, a graduated neutral density filter, you know, sort of from the top down. And I'll go ahead. We'll apply a sky save. And you'll see that it's just really bringing down sort of just the top part. We're not touching the bottom of this cloud so much. Uh, it may be getting affected just a little bit, uh, but not much. And really just, I think at 100 is pretty good. I may, if I, you really wanted to bring the focus into uh, these women on the sand, is you could bring it down a little bit. And that's just sort of darkening again. It's bringing down the exposure on the sort of the, the top part of these clouds. And then I could bring up my overall exposure. Or another nice trick that you could do is that you can apply one of the other three AI tools here. Now, I'm not really going to cover in detail what each of these tools do. We'll save that for our next videos. Um, but just to give you an example, Sky Save will work in the background of Spotlight, Light and Area Assist, and Dark and Moody. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use Spotlight for this one, and it's going to... Yeah, it looks like it is seeing those women uh, just on the sand, and that is what it's selecting. So if I go ahead, we've already recovered that detail in the sky. Now as I'm playing with this spotlight slider, I'm really just trying to find that balance of where they feel like they are really separated even more from the background, and the sky feels more dark and ominous. I mean, that's kind of what this is calling for, to me anyway. Um, now that I brought the background down, they feel pretty balanced. Let's just do a quick before and after. So this is before any edit. This is before the preset, before the three-step workflow, and now here's after. You know, SkySafe really helps the eye of the viewer feel like your photo is more balanced overall. Um, I think that's sort of the big takeaway I would say from SkySafe is that it is a tool that is there to help you balance your photos. Um, here's another great example. We'll move on to our next one, edited with Provia. I've already done, again, those three steps, and we'll go ahead and click Sky Save. This is a tricky one because Lightroom, while it is very good with its selection tool, there's a little bit of fuzz around the edges of this wheat. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a brush. So I'm gonna go to our selection tool. I'll click on Sky Save. I'm gonna click Subtract, go to Brush, and I'm gonna increase the size of this brush. Let's see, my flow, it looks pretty good. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of sweep along the bottom, just slowly sweeping across the bottom. Now, it, uh, as you're watching, it may not feel like I'm doing too much, but here, let's take a quick look of our before and after of this brush. So here is after and before. And it's really just helping, again, it's that balance. It's removing a little bit of that contrast between the wheat and the sky that we see when we have this sort of the sky save applied. Now, another handy trick, if you have clicked away or you've done something else, like for instance, you know, we've applied sky save, but now I've gone into my brush, I've made some changes, um, and I don't have my pre, I don't have my slider anymore. Well, all is not lost. We're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna click on Sky Save one more time, and what that's doing is it's bringing me back to sort of these base settings where I can now just adjust this slider instead. So the slider itself is still being affected in the same way that this preset slider is. It's just over here now um, because it is just affecting this tool alone. And here you'll have that same effect where I can crank up and do way too much, <laughs> uh, or here I'll reset it back to zero or pull it back and just get enough of the sky recovered. So again, where it just feels more balanced. Um, and yeah, that looks really great. Okay. Now uh, onto our last photo. This is a great example. I love this photo and SkySave does such an awesome job again of just drawing the viewer's eye towards your subject. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll close the mask and I'll just click SkySave. So here I'm bringing down that exposure. The sky is feeling more saturated and it's putting more emphasis on the subject itself. You know, we have a uh, dark here and then as it comes to light, Here's this other big pop of exposure. But now, because you have dark on top, dark below, you have that sort of balance. And I didn't mean for this to be uh, <laughs> a visual pun with him balancing and me talking about balance, but SkySave is really doing a great job with this photo. Um, let's just take a peek. If I were to go crank it to 200, it's starting to feel a little surreal. Um, I could bring up my exposure I don't know. Yeah, 200 is is a little bit much for this photo. There may be opportunities for you where it feels right, um, but I don't think being at full 200% power fits perfectly for this photo. So I'm going to go ahead. I had brought up my exposure. I'm going to bring my exposure back down, and then yeah, just I think you know here's at zero, and we'll just work our way up until it feels nice. Uh, yeah, I think right about there. Which hey, yeah, I was 99. I'll just bring that back to an even 100. 
And there you go. That is the power of SkySave, how to use it, and how it works best. Um, I think that SkySave, as I've mentioned a number of times, is just a very powerful tool to help you balance your images and be even more intentional with the colors, the tones, and just the viewing experience that each of your photos have. Uh, you know, all of these AI tools do such a great job. And the SkySafe tool that we've developed is just such a vital part of my workflow going forward. And as cliche as it sounds, SkySafe does such a great job and will do such a good job for you and your photos to really bring them to that next level of professionalism. Be sure to check out the rest of our AI tool videos where we cover how to use them, what they're doing, some tips and tricks, and we want to give you and your creativity as much space as we can to make the images you want. You know, editing is fun and we want you to be able to give your clients these beautiful images that you're creating with the least amount of work for you. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us via email at support at mastinlabs.com or directly through messenger at m.me forward slash mastinlabs. Until next time, have a great day and happy editing.